Welcome to this presentation about factors that influence nonverbal communication. Now there are a very large number of things that influence nonverbal communication, but in this presentation I'm going to emphasize the power relationship between the individuals involved, meaning what is the status of one person relative to the other person in the interaction, the sex of individuals, male versus female, and the cultural background of people and how that is related to the nonverbal behaviors that they use. Let me start with the effects of status on nonverbal behaviors. Now, this has been studied in a variety of different ways in research. Sometimes they get people who are naturally different in status, like they'll have a military officer interacting with a cadet who uh, is an ROTC at a college. Uh, maybe they'll have a professor interacting with a student. Some studies have been done in the workplace where bosses interact with employees. So you've got a natural status difference, but they've also done experiments where they just assign people to be the high or low status person in a, a relationship and they role play this and you find the same uh, sort of patterns. But in general, high status people um, exhibit much more dominant nonverbal behaviors than lower status people. They control more space, they touch their partner more, and they look more while they're speaking and less while they're listening than would ordinarily be the case. The lowest status person, on the other hand, um, has a more tense posture, they smile more, and they look more while they're listening and less while they're speaking. So a good way to think about uh, when these behaviors might be exhibited might be in a job interview situation. The person doing the interview is in the position of power, so that would be the high status person. The person who's the interviewee would be the low status person, the one lacking in power. And the behaviors that I've just described here would be things you would typically see from those two individuals in the job interview. There are consistent gender differences in nonverbal behavior as well. Females compared to males require um, smaller interaction distances and um, less personal space in general they tend to orient themselves more directly, engage in more eye contact, more smiling, and they're more likely to use the amount of gaze and their interaction distances to express the uh, degree of attraction they feel toward their partner. So notice that most of the female nonverbal behaviors are in general more intimacy. There's closer interaction distances, more eye contact, uh, more direct body orientation. Males are sort of the mirror image of this. In general, they require uh, larger personal spaces and greater interaction distances. They do not orient their bodies as directly. They do not engage in as much eye contact, uh, but they do engage in more touching in general than females do. And a person's cultural background is a very powerful determinant of the kinds of nonverbal behaviors that the person exhibits. Everywhere you go, there are rules about what is appropriate and what is not appropriate with nonverbal behavior. So it's not as if nonverbal behaviors matter in some places, but not others. But the rules are different, and so a lot of cultural misunderstandings can occur when visitors to a culture simply don't understand the messages that they're getting from their hosts. Cultures can be distinguished from each other according to something uh, that, that's called context. Uh, so is a culture a high context culture or a low context culture? A low context culture is one where the communication depends more strongly on the meaning of the words that are being spoken and less strongly on subtle nonverbal cues and understanding of norms of behavior. High context culture excuse me, high context cultures, on the other hand, um, it's not that the meaning of words is unimportant, but there's a much greater dependence upon nonverbal cues and a subtle understanding of the cultural rules. And it's in the high context cultures where a person, I think, has the greater risk of being misunderstood. This diagram indicates the uh, continuum um, of where different 
types of cultures stand on the low to high context uh, dimension. Uh, the low context cultures tend to be the Northern European uh, cultures, Germany, Scandinavia, uh, England. Americans are uh, more in this group than they are in other groups, but even within the United States, because it is such a diverse country, different subcultural groups may have different norms from each other. At the other end of the scale, um, African and Asian uh, countries, Arab countries, are much higher context. Much of what we know about cultural differences and nonverbal behavior uh, comes from the work of Edward T. Hall, the anthropologist who uh, was the pioneer in studying interaction distances. And he classified cultures for nonverbal purposes as being in one of two categories. He describes Northern European cultures uh, versus Mediterranean cultures. Northern European cultures on average correspond to the low context cultures we talked about on a previous slide. Uh, the norms in these places are for less intimate nonverbal behaviors. So you have bigger interaction distances, uh, lower levels of eye contact, and so forth. Mediterranean cultures, on the other hand, um, refer to Latin American cult countries, um, countries around the Mediterranean, like Southern European countries, uh, Arab countries, North African countries, um, which are also Arab countries. And uh, these cultures tend to have much more intimate nonverbal behaviors, closer interaction distances, a lot more eye contact, more touching. Um, and so the cultural background of the individual has a great deal to do with how much intimacy they display in their nonverbal behaviors.